When you are building an app for Android and iOS, you often find yourself in a situation where you need to pass the context to some Android-specific API. If you are using the expect and the actual mechanism and targeting Android, then you are probably going to end up thinking about the best possible way to do it. So the Android target in most cases needs the context object, while the iOS target doesn't know anything about it. Which is why you cannot pass the context object directly as a parameter in the expect declaration. There are some workarounds that you can use, but those are not quite clean solutions. In this video I'm gonna show you the most efficient and the best possible way to achieve exactly that. To pass the context object inside the Android target of a KMP project using the expect and the actual mechanism and a coin dependency injection library. Stay tuned! So let's uh, get uh, straight into the code. This is a, a sample KMP project with a shared UI that uh, I have uh, created. From the version catalog file, you can see that uh, we have uh, three dependencies Coin Core, Coin Compose, and uh, Coin Android. The Android artifact will be used uh, within the Android source set to access uh, one important function from the Coin library. That function will be used to pass an Android context to Coin. And you will see about that. Now, in the common main, I want to create a new directory uh, where uh, we will define the expect declaration that uh, should open up an email client on uh, each platform separately. So, let's create here an expect class with a single function. We can also pass the information about the subject and the message that we want to send. As well as the lambda that will return either true or false, depending if this operation succeeds. After that, press Alt plus Enter to select an option and generate the actual declarations for each one of those two source sets. So first let's handle the iOS part. Here I'm just gonna paste the logic that we're gonna use to open up the email client on an iOS platform. Even though we are not gonna be able to test that out on an iOS simulator because we cannot install the Gmail application for example. Unlike Android emulator, the iOS simulator does not have the App Store available. But nevertheless, this logic actually works and uh, I have tested it out on my real iPhone device. Now for the Android platform. So here we're gonna use the intent to launch an email application and uh, fill in some information about the receiver email address, subject and the message. You can see that uh, to be able to trigger this logic we need a context object. So, what are we gonna do now? Well, since uh, we will use a coin library to provide the context, let's just uh, pass that uh, from the constructor of this class. By the way, you can see here a warning on a resolve activity that uh, we need to declare queries first. So the queries element in the Android manifest file is uh, used to declare which uh, packages or applications uh, your application is allowed to query. This is a necessary because starting with Android 11 or API level 30, applications are restricted from acquiring other applications unless explicitly declared in the Android manifest file. Great. So with this we have completed a platform specific logic. Now we can focus on injecting the context into the Android target and provide the instance of this class so that we can later inject it into our common composable code. So first, in the common main, create a coin module Kotlin file where we're gonna declare an expect declaration for the coin module. Later, in each source set, we will define that same module where we need to describe how to provide an instance of the platform-specific email client class. The main difference is that in the Android source set, we're gonna have to pass a context object, while on the iOS part, we are not gonna need it. After that, create one more function that will be triggered on each platform to initialize the coin library. And inside the modules function, we're gonna pass that a target module that we want to initialize along with this library. After that, we're gonna add here one more parameter, a lambda, with a coin application scope. With a default value of null. Because we're gonna use this parameter only in the Android source set to pass the context. Also, be sure to call this lambda inside the start coin function if it's not null. Great. 
Now let's handle the actual declarations for the target module. First, the iOS. So here we just want to declare a, a singleton and initialize the email client class. There are two different syntax that we can use for that purpose, but the first one looks some more cleaner though. Also, while we are here, let's call the initialize coin function from the main view controller. We can pass a configure parameter here, which means that this block will be triggered only once we start the application. Perfect. Now for the Android target part. We need to create here an application class first and override on create function. Inside, we're gonna call that a same initialize coin function, and we're gonna also use that coin application scope to call Android context function and pass the context. So this function is available only within the coin application scope, which is why I have added that as a lambda parameter. And that's how we are able to provide a context parameter to a coin library, from which we can then easily inject the context object. Also, don't forget to declare this class in the Android manifest file as well. Lastly, in the actual declaration of the target module, we also need to initialize the email client. This time on Android part. We can also call a single off function like we did in the iOS part, or we can call a single function, but in this case we would have to call also get function and pass it as a parameter because email client depends on the context object. And get function is uh, practically used to tell coin to find that required parameter and uh, inject it. Either way, coin is uh, smart enough to find the context object that we have already provided and uh, inject it into each construct that depends on it. Very good. Finally, from the common composable code, we can call coin inject and specify the type that we want to inject in the composable function. Coin will then search for that type in the modules, provide the instance, and remember it within this composable scope. Great. And now we can call the open function from this email client and pass custom parameters. I will test this logic on an Android emulator now, because on the iOS simulator we are not gonna be able to install any email application. Anyhow, after we launch the application, click the button, then the logic will trigger and an email client will show up. So it works great. So there you go, that's how you can easily inject a context object in an Android source set using a coin library in a Kotlin multi-platform project. Comment down below and let me know your thoughts. And of course, don't forget to leave a like to this video, but only if you find it helpful. Thank you for watching.